Didn't want the broth at first. But now that he has bread, he wants to dip it. Yes, we found our ways. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys one of my all-time favorite sourdough bread recipes. This is a countryside miche recipe that takes a couple days because we are going to let it ferment overnight. Come on with me and let's get started. So I have my sourdough starter and it uh, has been on the counter since this morning. So it's been a few hours now and it is got this great bubbly consistency and it is ready to be used in our country style miche recipe, which calls for a good half cup. So I will get that as the first step. And I honestly love like as much sourdough as I can muster. And we'll just add all the ingredients to the mixer and then we'll be letting this sit overnight on the counter and it'll be part of tomorrow evening's supper. And it calls for one and a third cups of warm water. I like to mix this just a little bit on low. Then we are gonna have seven tablespoons of whole wheat flour. Two cups of regular all-purpose flour. And we're gonna have two teaspoons of sea salt. On my mixer I have the not the dough hook I guess but it's like the beater hook they call it I find it works really great for my dough mixes so unless it's gonna be a really thick dough I tend to use this dough hook versus the dough hook I find that this dough isn't that sticky uh, or tough so I can use the beater hook um, versus yeah if it was a thicker dough I'd go with the dough the dough hook. And then we're just going to be adding some plain, this is actually cane sugar, so we'll be adding two teaspoons of cane sugar. Just scrape it down kind of midway. And then I just kind of look to see how sticky the dough is. I do want to get it off of the sides a little bit more. It is looking a little bit too sticky still. So I'll just add a little bit more um, regular flour to this. I'm adding just another quarter cup of flour. There we go. So it just, it looks a little bit on the drier side but that's fine because then I can just grab it. We are just gonna let the dough rest for about 30 minutes or so just to let the water absorb in. I like this consistency on the dough because my hand comes off really clean. And that's how I know that I have enough flour added into it. I'm just gonna squish it together to form a nice ball. Yeah, looks perfect. So I'm just gonna drop this ball into a sprayed bowl and I just used some canola cooking spray and I just sprayed the bottom of the bowl. So this dough is ready to sit and rise overnight. And I got these fantastic bowls that have plastic lids for them. And it just snaps right on so then I can leave this on the counter overnight without the fruit flies getting into it and this is gonna sit all night and all day I might turn it so that the other side gets oil nice and oiled and then the only other ingredient that we need to worry about is some cornmeal that will be used in the baking dish so we'll check back in tomorrow 
So I just want to show you how I maintain my sourdough starter. It's so easy, honestly, because I took out half a cup, I'm going to be adding in at least half a cup of flour and half a cup of water back into my original container here. So I have, I actually am going to do a little bit more. So I have a cup of flour and the same amount. So a cup of water and I just mix it together like so just so that all of the flour is mixed in and I've just added more flour and water than the half cup because we tend to use our sourdough starter quite a bit and I intend on making some sourdough waffles uh, tomorrow since we're out of waffles in the freezer so to keep it simple, I just have a running sticky tab on the outside of my jar of the date that I last added flour to it, and I just stick it right on. So then I know kind of when was the last time I used it and added more flour and water to it. And then I just stick this guy in the fridge. If you want to learn more about sourdough and maintaining sourdough, I'll put a link up above to a main, how I maintain my sourdough starter. Good morning. This is what the dough looks like. It's risen up really nice. Yeah, you can see. I'm just going to give it a little turn. And then I'm going to let it sit again. You want to see? Yeah. So I just turned it and then we'll put the lid back on, let it sit for the rest of the day. Till supper time. All right, so we're just gonna get the dish for the sourdough ready. I got some cooking spray. Yay! Yay, says Lincoln. And I just spray the lid and the bowl, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of cornmeal just to coat the inside. And then I just tend to like roll it around. It doesn't need like a ton. It's just to prevent the dough, um, the bread from really sticking to the bottom. And then I've got our dough right here. Look how poofy that is. Whoop, whoop. Oh, thank you. You brought another lid. All right, then we're gonna take the dough and put it in. So that's ready. And then what I could do, I mean the dough is like so puffy, so I think it could go right into the fridge for a little um, cold fermentation time. And then once it's cold, then it's like really nice to use my, my tool to make cool designs in it. So I'm going to put this in the fridge for, I don't know, half an hour or so, and then we'll take it out and we'll cut a little, little design in it. I just pulled my bread from the fridge and it's just a little bit more firm. So I have my wood lame or my, my fancy little rickle and I'm just gonna slice it. And I'm going to go fairly deep. I'll just make a few other artistic cuts in it. If I would have left it in the fridge a little longer, it'd just be a little bit easier to slice into it it would have a little bit more firmness still a little gooey so i might just have to cut it a little bit deeper and the oven is set to 375 and is ready okay so i've cooked the bread for half an hour at 375 with the lid on then i took the lid off just for a little bit here and I uh, cooked it for another oh, about 15 minutes and I'm just gonna put a little bit of yeah. butter on top yeah. and then I'll let it finish cooking for another 15 minutes and then it'll be perfect thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video learning how to make your own bread at home I adore making our own bread it just there's something about fresh bread and butter that makes it absolutely divine 
If you like this kind of content, give me a like, subscribe, all that jazz. And if you want to check out more of our sourdough videos, I have the sourdough playlist here ready for you to go. Please, you want some? Yeah, okay, good. Put some buddy. On this, please. Thank you. Bye. Can we get taste? That's, that's mine. That's my soup. Can we make a taste of this butter? Yeah.